But the opportunities that I had, even though I left to, uh, in my senior year of high school to go to the Army and didn't get a high school diploma and got a GED, the Army scholarship and the opportunity to graduate from college, be commissioned, learn skills that have worked for me throughout my business career and today are still being used here in Congress, all of that comes because in this country, all one needs is a belief in our principles and a willingness to work, and the opportunities have always been there and will always be there. Before you leave, I would ask you all to, uh, to provide a few dollars to the Metro or the, uh, uh, the cabs here and go down to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and then go up to the nation's capital. Our founding fathers knew that in fact what would oversee our government was the house of the people, the Congress, a place where every two years we go back and we face you, the voters. We go back and ask you how we're doing. And we're so often told, quite rightfully, we should do better. And do better we will. This administration needs the scrutiny of my committee. I've been privileged to lead a group of individuals, not to be the leader, but to lead this group of individuals who have done great research, who have le leveraged our capabilities with capabilities around the country, with people who have done the things they should do. do, do blew the whistle as former ACORN people on wrongdoing of ACORN, dug in the dumpsters in San Diego to find 50,000 pages of documents intended to be destroyed, but unfortunately left in an unlocked dumpster. We here today are here to a great extent for this panel to talk about the wrongdoing of ACORN. But before that, I want to talk very specifically about this president. This president would have you believe that in fact he inherited a great deal and that he, does, he is here today and doing the people's work to change America for the better and that he works for you. He would have you believe that. But I would say one year after the stimulus of $787 billion without a single Republican vote that his policies are not only failed but you can begin to see a pattern in his policies. The pattern in his policies are very clear. They're for the unions, they're for the democratic machine, they're for the liberal agenda. And I'm going to give you a case in point. My investigators have done what investigators do. They've searched through to see, well, what is it the president is really committed to? Where were his real campaign promises? So I would ask you to take a moment and look at this video and then see if the video doesn't answer exactly what's going on here in Washington. And you know I, you've got a friend in me, and I definitely welcome uh, Acorn's input. You don't have to ask me about that. I'm going to call you even if you, if you didn't ask me. When I ran Project Vote, voter registration drive in Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Acorn was smack dab in the middle of it. Once I was elected, there wasn't a campaign that Acorn worked on down in Springfield that I wasn't right there with you. Since I've been in the United States Senate, I've been uh, always a partner with Acorn as well. I've been fighting with ACORN, uh, alongside ACORN, on the issues you care about my entire career. Every major bill this Congress has sent to the President has been loaded with kickbacks, payoffs, and earmarks designed to reward liberal special interest groups, labor unions, and political allies of the Democratic Party. That is undeniable. But what is also undeniable is, yes, ACORN is at the center of it all. The most important thing that you're going to hear on this panel today is not about a question of, of the left or the right. It's going to be about an organization, ACORN, who in an al as an ally of the Service Employee International Union and a number of other unions we've now uncovered that are directly working with them, they have formed a criminal enterprise. In my report last year, I asked the question, is ACORN intentionally structured as a criminal enterprise? When you find over a hundred corporations and the lead corporation, which could be a nonprofit, not being a nonprofit, and paying taxes specifically because they didn't want to be under that umbrella, putting together an, an impossible to separate group of organizations 
that are co-located with unions, have dual hats with unions. You understand that one of the things that we discovered is the Service Employee International Union and, and ACORN are not only co-located, but they instruct people to say they represent both organizations. Like that wouldn't be a small conflict for a nonprofit community organization that only cares about the poor. Caring about the poor and union efforts, do they really go hand in hand? I believe on this panel today, you're going to see that it's just the opposite. That ACORN not only leveraged over $53 million of taxpayers' money, but tens of million dollars of money extorted from banks based on you don't want us talking bad about you, so fund our outreach, fund our ability to help the underserved get a loan. That money was unabashedly used in combination with the union and other democratic associations to, in fact, distort the very democracy we depend on. For all of us here today, the most important thing we care about is that our process be able to make a fair decision. In Massachusetts, just a matter of weeks ago, we saw a decision that was unthinkable in the polls, impossible a year ago, and determined by the people of Massachusetts. In spite of every effort to turn out unlimited Democratic votes, to exaggerate the uh, support of a flawed candidate, Scott Brown got elected. The lights were on very bright, and it was much harder to distort that election. It is not hard to do a few thousand votes in a congressional race. The amount of thousands of votes that you have to put together, the difference between a Republican majority and a Democrat majority, or vice versa, quite frankly, is usually less than a few hundred thousand votes. And you do it district by district. I'm telling you today that this organization, in fact, sets out to do exactly that to shade it enough to make a difference, and they do it at all levels. And in case some of you are conservative Democrats, as you well might be, let me make something very clear. They don't just defeat Republicans with Democrats. They play in the primary. When you have a conservative Democrat that fits his or her district, they play to make sure they get their particular style of Democrat. They distort democracy in the primary. They distort democracy in the general. Now, before this panel comes up, and I'm going to do everything I can to get you the opportunity to hear this, I want to just set the record straight on this president, because I think it's important that somebody say that all we need to do is shine the truth and then let people decide for themselves. The American people need the facts on this administration, and here they are. First, the president has the nerve to say he will limit his own campaign spending well, he relies on ACORN to illegally uh, do his election work for him and then lectures the Supreme Court justices on protecting the rights of those participating in elections. <laughs> Second, to my amazement, his economic team covers up what's really happening in our economy and, is, and in calling the shots, they actually are trying to say that their bailouts and borrowing are part of our recovery. It's true. Third and most, most dangerously, a national security team whose efforts to dismantle effective system of protecting Americans has won applause and even, yes, even a Nobel Peace Prize. And who gave us the award? Those who have no vested interest in our security, not the American people who know that in fact a prisoner of war is not tried in a Illinois or New York court. So why is an unlawful, yeah, go ahead, please. An unlawful combatant is a prisoner of war who has violated the laws of war. That person is less entitled to protection than a prisoner of war. And yet this administration is, in, is insisting on giving special rights beyond what a prisoner of war would have, and it's wrong. Fourth, the campaign spin team has hyped the stimulus jobs that do not exist, has called record budget deficits fiscal restraint, has pushed corrupted science to get a global warming tax, and has last and most, most unconscionably reached out to us saying that he wants bipartisanship in order to get a partisan advantage for a health care bill the American people have already decided 
they do not want.